Hi guys and welcome back on the NMS Prime channel. Today I want to speak about DHCP server configuration for cable operators. Let's get started. Okay, I have logged into our demo system and now I want to jump into the main configuration file of the DHCP server, which in NMS Prime case is this file. This file will be started when we, or will be loaded when we start the DHCP server. So first what we see here is some generic stuff. Um, you can read it at Google on the man pages of the DHCP server. I don't want to jump into this. Um, here we've got um, a key for DHCP update for the um, bind service. We are using name D or bind service uh, to apply host names to our cable modems because all or most of the stuff which we assign is fully dynamically. So every cable modem, for example, uh, requests dynamic IP addresses. This has the big advantage that a customer can uh, move between different cable modem termination systems or different routers, which a cable modem termination system is, and he will get everywhere online. If you assign IP addresses statically, then you have to introduce some kind of cluster uh, for a cable modem and uh, afterwards, for this purpose, um, you always have to say, okay, this modem is behind this router or this CMTS. And to avoid this kind of stuff, um, we use completely dynamically uh, IP addresses. And um, for the analysis part, of course, we want to know um, a direct connection between the customer modem and um, the quality of the modem or which IP the modem has. And for this purpose, we use bind um, dynamic uh, hostname services and uh, what you see here is just the secret key so that every time a cable modem gets online our DHCP server says this IP address to the bind system. So this is one cool design uh, paradigm which we choose uh, really early when we developed NMS Prime. So here we've got some stuff for packet cable. I also don't want to jump into this because you can google it and you can find it um, in the man pages. So next what you see is that we include the global config and this is really where the magic happens. Um, we just want to go through this file. Here we've got some DNS and dynamic DNS stuff which you also can find um, at Google. And here we just say okay our shared network, this is the network where the DHCP server should listen on. And here we say, okay, when we start the DHCP server, he will listen at this interface. And deny booting means that no host at this sub uh, network can boot via DHCP. And at the uh, end of the file, we've just seen that we included some special files, for example, modems, our modem list, our clients, our public clients, we will jump in this, our endpoints and our packet cable devices, so our MTAs. Here we've got some locking stuff and at the back uh, of the file or the last line includes our CMTS gateways configuration and inside this file there are more include statements which will include um, our separate CMTSs. So now we want to jump into the global file like I said and here is really the magic. So let's get in and first what you see it's also generic stuff. Um, I don't want to jump into this, but um, here is the entire magic. So, okay, I want to explain it. We've defined four different classes for our cable networks. The first class are cable modems itself. Then we have MTAs, which is packet cable uh, for VoIP. Then we have clients, which is the CPE uh, of the customer. And then we've got client public, which means uh, client addresses or CPEs with public uh, IP addresses. And what we do in each class is that in every class there's a simple or more complex matching. And now I want to jump into this. So, for example, the class cable modem just says match if substring option vendor class identifier uh, 0 to 6 uh, is name of DOCSIS, which means if a cable modem sends a DHCP discover um, on request, then inside it will have this special string and we just match against the string and afterwards we notice, okay, 
This is a cable modem, so we assign it to class CM. The next thing that we do is nearly the same for MTA devices. We just say match if substring, especially the same like above, but here only four characters, zero to four, and we just match against packet cable. So every MTA which requests in a cable network must have this string inside. This is just uh, some kind of DOCSIS specification request. So that's really the magic for cable modem and MTAs. And now it gets a little bit more complex um, because we are looking at clients. So a client is, for example, just that we say we match if the substring option vendor is not a cable modem and is not a packet cable device. So this means, of course, there is only CPEs left. And this means this must be a CPE, so some kind of exclude if statement. And that's quite cool. But now it gets a little bit more complex because we need to differentiate between private CPEs and public CPEs. And for this purpose, we have another class which is called client public. And client public has exactly the same match uh, like the normal client, which is exclude uh, DOCSIS and packet cable devices. But now we see here that we have a statement which is called match pick first value. And uh, this means that uh, the client public will be or must be specified explicitly inside uh, our pool definition. And I want to jump into this uh, very soon. So, okay, some cool thing that we see here is that we have a least limit uh, command, which means that only every, um, every client behind a cable modem can have four leases. So if the, um, if the customer tries to abuse this, then the DHCP server will limit um, four CPEs per cable modem and not more. Okay, now I want to jump inside um, the configuration files where you can see how we use these kind of pools. So for this purpose, we need to jump in this file where the CMTSs are hosted. So let's get in. And here we see, okay, for each CMTS, we have a different file. And now we want to jump into this file. So, okay, and now we see this, for example, is our pool for um, cable modems. We just see the IP address, the net mask, this is nothing special, the router, the option broadcast address, everything is cool, the range which the cable modem can apply to. Um, here between 10.001 and this IP address. And here we just say allow members of class cable modem that's the magic and we deny unknown clients, which means cable modem addresses, which are not known to us are just ignored. Okay. Um, now we've got here, for example, the normal client list. So which is CPEs and we still have the subnet and net mask. I don't want to jump into this. And here we see in this pool, we just allow members of client and we deny members of client public, which will of course uh, exclude all cable modems. It will exclude all packet cable devices like we see in the definition of client and it will deny all clients inside the public addresses. So this means all devices which are no cable modem, no packet cable device and no public clients is a client. This is just logic and it works. And um, you can imagine, for example, our MTA pool is really the same. We just type in allow members of MTA. These files are automatically deployed when you using NMS Prime and you add a cable modem termination system. So you don't have to worry about it. It's just to give you more specific information about how the stuff works. And um, now we just take a look at our modem files, for example. So if we go back to this file, we've just see here, for example, we include our modem hosts. So let's jump in this file. 
modem hosts. And here we just see, okay, we have host of cable modem uh, 100,000. And here we have Ethernet hardware address of the cable modems, which will apply it. And then we say this is the configuration file where the cable modem needs to boot. And here we say that's the dynamic name server. So which just means we apply this uh, string for the cable modem. And later on, we can ping the cable modem with this um, greet DNS configuration. So we can just type in ping cm minus 100,000 dot and then the rest of our domain. Um, and then we see if the cable modem is online. So that's all the magic inside here. Let's get into the modems client public file, which will include the modems which have a public address. So here we see we've created a subclass and we just type in, um, that's really important, um, not the MAC address of the CPE, but the MAC address of the cable modem, which will um, need a public CPE behind it. And this is just done by a special statement inside our global config file, uh, which means match pick first value option agent remote ID, which means we use subclasses inside this class and only we match uh, a CPE public inside this class if this of course applies. So if it's not a DOCSIS device and not a packet cable device, and if there is a subclass where a remote agent ID, remote agent ID means that the CPE requests always with a statement inside the DHCP where the cable modem MAC address is uh, implied. And this option is called remote agent ID. And so we just uh, apply a client public um, if these value match. And this means inside this file, we have the cable modem MAC addresses or the remote option ID of the CPE which will be uh, public clients. So of course, these files are also automatically written when you are using NMS Prime. And I guess that's most of the magic which I want to explain in this video. And for you guys, of course, it's cool to jump in and maybe after the vi this video, it's quite a little bit more uh, easy to get into details. Um, I guess maybe that's it for now. Maybe some short comment about how we automatically uh, load this file and not the normal file, which is here. This is just done when you install NMS Prime via RPM. And for this purpose, I want to jump in our repository. And here we've got, uh, let's get back. Here are the photos of NMS Prime and every magic happens inside the modules. So you just type in the modules directory if you want to check out something special and the provisioning stuff is done in prof base and every module has a special install folder and install and inside the install folder there's always a configuration file and this configuration file is used during rpm installation and here we see for example some generic stuff which is not this important now but what you see here is all these files which are um, assigned here will be automatically um, installed during RPM installation. Also, if you use Git, we have some special commands to install this automatically. And then the magic will happen. And what you see here is that we, uh, um, it's not working. And what you see here is that we use this special file um, to give the DHCP server some special boot information. And now we want to jump inside this. And here we see we replace the Excel C start command with our own configuration file. And that's the magic while when we type in that the server uses our special configuration file. That's it for now. Just quite not an easy topic. So the videos are getting a little bit longer. I'm sorry for that. I try to make it as short as possible. Um, but of course there must be every information inside it. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about DHCP server configuration, then maybe just use YouTube to get in contact with us. And that's it for now. See you in the next video. Bye.